winning song. And so <laughs> I'm still a little off balance now. I, you know what? I did not know how much, you know, how, well, number one, how used I have gotten to, you know, we've been doing this for almost two years now. For, yeah. So, yeah, you know, we, we do this the way we do it. But we could do it without the Zoom connection, and yet it just doesn't feel right. It right. doesn't. It doesn't feel right. And so, I mean, we were going to go ahead and do what we had to do, but man, I was just feeling totally off balance. So I'm glad you're here, Farah and Simone and Camise and uh, Joan and uh, Gigi. Uh, yeah, no, we, we can't hear you yet, Camise. I know you're muted. Uh, say something for us. Uh, just good so morning. Good morning to both of you. Yes, we hear you fine. Thank you so much. Now, folks, um, today, as you know, if you've been joining us before, um, we, hang on one second. Let me make sure I have everything set up here the way it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, today, we're, we're still reading from the proofs of Baha'u'llah's mission, the proofs of Baha'u'llah's mission. And uh, last week, we were talking about well, well, the name of last week's chapter, the title of it was His Teachings Provide the Basis for Individual Transformation. The teachings of Baha'u'llah in that chapter was all about the basic, that, that when we apply the teachings of Baha'u'llah in this day, it can, it can be the foundation, or it can be the foundation of just transforming individuals, making us better people, making us, you know, uh, uh, I guess reach our spiritual potential. I'm not sure how I really want to say that. That's but good. again, that's good. Yeah, provide the basis for individual transformation. But individual transformation in this dispensation, in this revelation, individual transformation is not enough. It simply is not enough. Hello, Joan. And so it's important that we now look at the next chapter. I mean, it, it, I should point out that in the last chapter, in chapter 28, uh, it, you know, we read about the importance of spiritual education, okay, and how uh, it leads to the enlightenment of the individual, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But now, this next chapter is not just talking about individual transformation. This next chapter, the title of it is, this chapter 29, it's on page 157 of this text, again, the proofs of the Hallel's mission. And, the, and this particular title of this chapter is His Teachings, the Teachings of Baha'u'llah. His Teachings Provide the Basis for a New Civilization. His Teachings Provide the Basis for a New Civilization. And I need to give people a heads up. We were already talking about this earlier. Uh, much of what we're reading today uh, is uh, uh, it's a bit high level. Uh, and it's, you know, it might be easy from a reader standpoint, but from a listener standpoint, admittedly, it's a bit high level. And it's because much of what we're reading today is coming from Shogi Effendi. And we've talked, uh, you know, spoken several times about just the, some of the complexity of his language. Still, the, the message, it, it certainly is, uh, you know, no less important, it is extremely important. And so maybe we need to kind of, you know, uh, we probably will have to stop at a few points and, you know, kind of clarify some of the things he's saying. That, not that everyone needs that, but I'll go ahead and say it. I don't know if Nini's listening, but I'll say hi, Nini. <laughs> Nini told me <laughs> last week's uh, uh, message was, was, was kind of complicated. Okay. You know, we had quite a bit of Shogi Appendage <clears throat> too. And so uh, a lot of Shogi Appendage today. And so I thought maybe we need to at least acknowledge that. Yeah, it's, it's compli complicated, probably not the right word, but complex. Complex. And some of it is because of the language that is being used. And so, uh, and some of the sentence structure and so forth, you know, Shogi Appendage, we've talked about how his method of writing uh, has a lot of detail in it. And again, from a listening standpoint, it might be a bit of a challenge, but uh, I could keep talking and use up all our time. We're already at 10, 12. I better go ahead and stop talking. And uh, let's begin. His teachings provide the basis for a new civilization. 
A lot of interesting stuff in this chapter. I want you to know that right up front. So, Daryl, if you'd please. Sure. This is a century of life and renewal. Sciences and arts, industry and invention have been reformed. Law and ethics have been reconstituted, reorganized. The world of thought has been regenerated. Sciences of former agency, of former ages and philosophies of the past are useless today. Present exigencies demand new methods of solution. World problems are without precedent. Old ideas and modes of thought are fast becoming obsolete. Ancient laws and archaic ethical systems will not meet the requirements of modern conditions, for this is clearly the century of a new life, the century of the revelation of reality, and therefore the greatest of all centuries. Consider how the scientific developments of 50 years have surpassed and eclipsed the knowledge and achievements of all the former ages combined. With the announcements and former, with the announcements and theories of ancient astronomers explain our present knowledge of the suns and planetary systems. With the mask of obscurity, which beclouded medieval centuries, meet the demand for clear-eyed vision and understanding, which characterizes the world today. Will the despotism of former governments answer the call for freedom, which has risen from the heart of humanity in this cycle of illumination? Okay, I'm stopping you right there, Daryl. You already covered a lot. A lot of questions there. The main point that seems to be uh, being made by Abdul Baha, this is from Promulgations of Universal Peace. The main point seems to be things have changed. changed. <laughs> Absolutely. Not just a little bit, but have changed drastically. So drastically that the old ways of thinking, the old ways of dealing with the problems of humanity simply will no longer suffice. And it, it, it is interesting that even today, I mean, you think about it, even this was, was revealed about 100 Not years ago. Yeah. Right. And yet even today, we have people, a lot of people with some real power that are trying to apply old, obsolete, inadequate solutions to, the, to, to, to today's problems. And so that's the main point here. I mean, he goes into such great detail, but I think it's important, again, that we just basically point out that, and, and he asks those questions. Uh, to me, he's asking them, he's posing them as a challenge and almost, to me, almost almost sarcastically. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously not meant in that way. That's the way I read things, but I read a lot sarcastically, you know, with the mask of obscurity. With the, if people didn't know things that we know now, do we pretend that we don't know those things now? Yeah. Of course not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so you can continue, please. It is evident that no vital results are now forthcoming from the customs, institutions, and standpoints of the past. In the view of this, shall blind imitations of ancestral forms of the theological inter interpretations continue to guide and control the religious life and spiritual development of humanity today. They cannot. Shall man gifted with the power of reason unthinkingly follow and adhere to dogma, creeds, and hereditary beliefs, which will not bear the analysis of reason in this century of effulgent reality? Huh. This, con answer? this confirms what you all, all of the things that we just said. Yeah, we, we know things that we that we didn't know before. Do we pretend we don't know them? And yet there are some people, many people, I think, who want the comfort, or I shouldn't say want the comfort, but somehow find comfort in remaining blind or ignorant to current reality, to new discoveries, to 
uh, ways of thinking that show a deeper level of understanding in the way, let's just say the way life works. Right. And Abdul Baha here, here is saying, uh, no, we have the power of reason. reason. Do we disregard that power of reason and keep following dogma, creeds, and hereditary beliefs, which will not bear the analysis of reason in this century of effulgent reality? And of course, and the answer to that is, no, we should not do that. We, we, we need to admit that we are in a new day. We have new information, new guidance in this new dispensation. Now, the next uh, section is really quite long, and this is where we start getting into Shogi Effendi. Uh, <laughs> this is coming from Shogi Effendi's uh, World Order of Baha'u'llah. And so uh, soon, <laughs> <laughs> Baha'u'llah's own words uh, proclaimed, will the present day order be rolled up and a new one spread out in its stead. Verily thy Lord speaketh the truth and is the knower of things unseen. By myself, he solemnly asserts, the day is approaching when we will have rolled up the world and all that is therein and spread out a new order in its stead. He verily is powerful over all things. The world's equilibrium, he explains, has been upset to the vibrating influence of this of this most great, this new world order. Mankind's ordered life has been revolutionized through the agency of this unique, this wondrous system, the like of which mortal eyes have never witnessed. The signs of impending convulsions and chaos, he warns the people of the world, can now be discerned inasmuch as the prevailing order appeareth to be lamentably defective. I got to ask you, Daryl. To quote my daughter, Kristen, what does it all mean? <laughs> what does it all mean? Well, I think if you look at just the nature of all things, the nature of all things in creation, it means that uh, in order for uh, the, the world to continue to grow and survive, the old things have to pass away. Mm -hmm. and, and new things, I mean, if you look at it at, at a forest, if a tree falls in the forest, it decays and becomes part of the, the, the ground, but a new tree grows up through that, that whole process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is the nature of all things to change and to grow and to so that's that's kind of what it all means yeah and, and and this is not just random this is not just happenstance i'm going to read this 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 couple of sentences that you read and this is good again coming from baha'u'llah he says by myself capital m by myself he solemnly asserts the day is approaching when we capital w when we will have rolled up the world and all that is therein and spread out a new order, capital O, a new order in its stead. Meaning, well, one thing that we talk about in Baha'i circles is that when the manifestation of God comes, there is this explosion, for lack of a better word, of spiritual energy, right? That affects change, that brings about change. And he describes some of this change. He says, the world's equilibrium, he explains, have been upset through the vibrating influence of this most great, this new world order. World and order, again, capitalized. Again, as we've said before, when, we, when they're capitalized, usually these, the, the capitalizations are a reference to the manifestation of God or God. And so this new world order, is being God-driven, okay? This energy is coming from the arrival of the manifestation of God. And, and, and he points out mankind's order of life hath been revolutionized through the agency 
of this unique, this wondrous system, <clears throat> the like of which mortal eyes have never witnessed. Now you think about it, this was written back in the 1800s. Think about how much has so drastically changed since then. I mean, that, that, that slow progression of let's say human progress itself, suddenly so much faster. Things started changing so much quickly and, conti and, and continued even today. One, one correction though, this yes. was not written in the 1800s. This is the 1900s. Oh, no, 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 I, I'm talking about this quote from Baha'u'llah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. The, this particular whole passage was written in the 1900s, but this quote from Baha'u'llah that, that uh, uh, Shoghi Effendi is referring to was coming from the 1800s. Right. And you know, right. late 1800s, but 1800s nonetheless. And yeah, he's saying, this is what's happening. And it hadn't started yet. I mean, not, not in ways that were so obviously visible. And then you get into the 1900s, boom, 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 boom. There are all these amazing Drastic acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. let's go ahead and continue. This new world order, whose promise is enshrined in the revelation of Baha'u'llah, whose fundamental principles have been enunciated in the writings of the center of his covenant, it involves no less than the complete unification of the entire human race. This unification should conform to such principles as would directly harmonize with the spirit that animates and the laws that govern the operation of the institutions that already constitute the structural basis of the administration of the order, capital O, of his faith. Okay, hang on. That's a lot. That's a short paragraph, but that's a lot. I mean, this is to me one of those things that is pointing out. Again, this is not just about the individual. I mean, think about this the, is civilization. Exactly. This is civilization. Thank you. This is not just that person who follows the right, the teachings, the spiritual teachings of the manifestation somehow having a leg up and, you know, going to some special place in the afterlife. Yeah. I'm not saying that's not a part of it, but more importantly, what, remember the title of this chapter, his teachings provide the basis for a new civilization. And that's what's being said here. And it's pointing out some of the things that are going to be happening in this new civilization, complete unification of the entire human race, conforming to such principles as would directly harmonize with the spirit that animates and the laws that govern the operation of the institutions that constitute the structural basis of the administrative order of his faith. So this is, this is not just individuals, this is organizations, this is groups, this is large populations of people. This is, as Daryl pointed out, civilization. And that's an important distinction to make. Okay. No machinery falling short of the standard inculcated by the Baha'i revelation and the variance with the sublime pattern ordained in his teachings, which the collective efforts of mankind may yet devise can ever hope to achieve anything above or beyond that lesser peace to which the author of our faith as has himself alluded in his writings. We're talking about the lesser piece, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and if, 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 you're, if you are not familiar with the Baha'i writings or, or to the extent they talk at great length about the greater piece and the lesser piece. Which is a greater piece, is a spiritually based piece. But then there is the lesser piece that precedes it. Uh, and that's a reference to that. Now that you have re refused the most great piece, he admonished he admonishing the kings and rulers of the earth has written, Hold ye fast unto this, the lesser peace, that haply ye may in some degree better your own condition and that of your dependence. Expatiating on this lesser peace, he thus addresses in that same tablet the rulers of the earth. Be reconciled among yourself, that ye may need no more armaments, save in a measure to safeguard your territories and dominions. Be united, O kings of the earth, for thereby will the tempest of discord be stilled amongst you, 
and your peoples find rest. If ye be of them that comprehend, should anyone among you take up arms against another, rise ye all against him. For this is not but manifest justice. You know, as you're reading, I, I can't help thinking about, you know, again, uh, well, number one, references in the Bible to the prince of peace. peace. That's right. Okay. And of course, most people, and particularly if they're of the Christian tradition, think of that as a reference to Jesus Christ. It's a reference to the manifestation of, of God. Right. You know, but this is where that peace on the global level, peace. exactly, right. this, is where it, this is where it began. So we go from wonderful mystical teachings to practical application right. in a way that is appropriate for the age in which this peace will be established. And as you pointed out, it doesn't start out with total absolute peace. And some of it is because of the uh, refusal of, of the world's leaders to accept the teachings of Baha'u'llah. But still there is that lesser peace that, that, that he offers to perceive the most great peace or what we often refer to as the greater peace. The most great peace on the other hand, as conceived by Baha'u'llah, a peace that must inevitably follow as the practical consequence of spiritualization of the world and the fusion of all its races, creeds, classes, and nations can rest on no other basis and can be preserved through no other agency except the divinely appointed ordinances that are implicit in the world order that stands associated with his holy name. Mm. In his tablet, revealed almost 70 years ago to the Queen Victoria, Baha'u'llah, alluding to this most great peace, has declared, that which the Lord hath ordained as the sovereign remedy and mightiest instrument for the healing of all the worlds is the union of all its peoples in one universal cause, one common faith. Mm -hmm. This can in no wise be achieved except through the power of a skilled and all powerful and inspired physician. This verily is the truth and all else not but error. It beseemeth all men in this day, he in another tablet asserts, to take firm hold on the most great name and to establish the unity of all mankind. There is no place to flee to, no refuge that anyone can seek except him. Now, Daryl, as you were reading, I was thinking, we've already touched on at least three things, and I'm sure more than that, the three things in particular uh, that I'm sure some people might take issue with, but just have a difficulty believing. And yet, we believe, I believe it, I believe it, and I don't, I, I, it's here in the writings of Baha'u'llah. One of those that some people would take issue with, three words, new world order. Yeah. This is often given a negative connotation, but that new world order it's not something where, you know, some despotic leader or even a nation of leaders or governors, you know, take, establish some terrible, you know, government or whatever. This is saying this is the new world order. It is a spiritually based order. Okay. And then there's the greater peace that some people who claim to believe in, you know, in God or in Jesus or whatever, they have a problem believing that peace is even possible. Right. And yet here we are being told that greater peace will come. We're not saying it's right now, but it will come. And then that third thing that is to be a part of that peace, the unity of all mankind. Right. At this point, I could understand how some people could say, no, that's not going to happen. But if you read the writings of Baha'u'llah and all of the subsequent writings from Abdu'l-Baha and Shoghi Effendi and so forth, you'll see it, it becomes believable because you can see how it can be done. And you can see that it's not done through the power of man. It's based on the spiritual power that God sends through the manifestation right. of God. Okay. I'll stop there. Want to do the song? Or? Sure. Okay.
We mentioned the greater peace. Have you heard this song? Yes, you have. <laughs> I guarantee you, you've heard it. And you can see the chords. It's, <laughs> it's in my wheelhouse, which means it's in one of your wheelhouses. <laughs> There is a time for which we long with each passing day as time goes on. There is a time, a time that will come, a day that is promised. Before time is done, it's the greater peace, the greater peace, the greater peace. And when that day comes, there'll be no more hate. Mankind will be loving for this day we wait. Songs will be sung, children will play. There'll be no more battles on that wonderful day. It's the greater peace. The greater peace, the greater peace. There will be plowshares made out of swords, and mankind will study war no more. The light of all truth will shine from the east, fulfilling the promise of the greater peace. It's the greater peace, the greater peace, the greater. There will be bounces made out of salt. Man can study war no more. The light of all the truth will shine from the east. I don't think I've ever played I'm it. I'm telling you, I'm not sure you've ever played it, but I know you've heard it because I don't think I've ever heard it. I think you have, but anyway, we'll talk about that after. We actually had quite a bit. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if maybe we should have made this a two-parter, but it's right on the right on the border of, of 
Anyway, we're going to continue. We yeah, don't really have that much more to, to, uh, to cover. So you take over. All righty. <laughs> um, the Revelation of Baha'u'llah. The Revelation of Baha'u'llah, whose supreme mission is none other but the achievement of this organic and spiritual unity of the whole body of nations, the whole body of nations, the globe, should, if we be faithful to its implications, be regarded, this revelation, it should be regarded as signalizing through its advent, the coming age of the entire human race, the coming age of the entire human race. Now, this is very, very important, so you're gonna have to listen. You're gonna have to really listen. It should be viewed not merely as yet another spiritual revival in the ever-changing fortunes of mankind, not only as a further stage in a chain of progressive revelations, nor even as the culmination of one of a series of recurrent prophetic cycles, but rather as marking the last, the last and highest stage in the stupendous evolution of man's collective life on this planet. The last and highest stage in the stupendous evolution of man's collective life on this planet. The emergence of a world community, the consciousness of world citizenship, the founding of a world civilization and culture, all of which must synchronize, it's all got to fit together, all of which must synchronize with the initial stages in the unfoldment of the golden age of the Baha'i era. Should, by their very nature, these things should, by their very nature, be regarded, as far as this planetary life is concerned, as the furthermost limits in the organization of human society. Now, that's an important phrase, as the furthermost limits in the organization of human society, though man as an individual, nay, will, nay, must indeed, as a result of such a consummation, continue indefinitely to progress and develop. In other words, we are reaching the highest level of organization of human society, but and as an individual, each person can continue to develop. So those are two things that are being talked about in that sense, the organization of society as a whole into uh, a unified whole, in, in which we reach the culmination of that, organ, of, of that development. But then, even within that development, uh, with that culmination of the organization, each individual can continue to progress. That mystic, all pervasive yet indefinable change which we associate with the stage of, mature, of maturity inevitable in the life of the individual and the development of the fruit must, if we would correctly apprehend the utterances of Baha'u'llah, in other words, if we would truly know his teachings, if we would correctly apprehend the utterance of Baha'u'llah, it would have its counterpart in the evolution of the organization of the human society. Okay, so in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and say this a little simpler. Again, again, he calls it mystic, that mystic, all pervasive yet indefinable change which we associate with the stage of maturity inevitable in the life of the individual, it must also have its counterpart in the evolution of human society, in the way society is organized. A similar stage must sooner or later be attained in the collective life of mankind. Producing an even more striking phenomenon in world relations and endowing the whole human race with such potentialities of well-being as shall provide through the succeeding ages the chief incentive required for the eventual fulfillment of its high destiny. Come on, Shogi, can't you? <laughs> it's basically saying, yes, as an individual, you will constantly, we can constantly continue to develop, but within the context of a larger society, which is also developing to its highest level, thereby enabling the human beings as individuals to become better human beings. 
to become more spiritual human beings and to 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 actually reap the fruits thereof. You're looking at me like I'm sounding crazy. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Such a stage of maturity in the process of human government, government, such a stage of maturity in the process of human government must for all time, if we would faithfully recognize the tremendous claim advanced by Baha'u'llah, such a stage of maturity in the process of human government must remain identified with the revelation of which he was the bearer. Yes, we'll get the benefits, but we need to know the source. And the source is the revelation of the Torah. Such is the stage to which an evolving humanity is collectively approaching. The revelation entrusted by the almighty ordainer to Baha'u'llah, his followers firmly believe, has been endowed with such potentialities as are commensurate with the maturity of the human race. In other words, everything in this revelation is intended to lead, is everything we need for the maturity of the human race. The crowning and most momentous stage in its evolution, the human race's evolution, from infancy to manhood. In other words, everything we need for total maturity is in the revelation of Baha'u'llah. The successive founders of all past religions who from time immemorial have shed with ever increasing intensity the splendor of one common revelation at the various stages which have marked the advance of mankind towards maturity may thus in a sense be regarded as preliminary manifestations. In other words, all those previous dispensations, all those previous uh, revelations, we, we should see them as preliminary manifestations that were designed to bring us to the point we are now anticipating and paving the way for the advent of that day of days. When the whole, whole earth, I like this word, when the whole earth will have fructified <laughs> and the tree of humanity will have yielded its destined fruit. In other words, when the whole earth will have become, bar I'm not bearing, but will bear fruit. That's what I mean, will bear fruit. And the tree of humanity will have yielded its destined fruit, will reach our potential. Incontrovertible, as is this truth, its challenging character should never be allowed to obscure the purpose or distort the principle underlying the utterances of Baha'u'llah. In other words, yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging but it should never blind us to the purpose or distort the principle underlying the utterances of Baha'u'llah. Utterances that have established for all time the absolute oneness of all the prophets, himself included, whether belonging to the past or to the future. I think this is Shoghi Effendi's way of saying, I know this is hard for you to wrap your brain around. <laughs> it's challenging, but it should never be allowed to obscure the purpose or distort the principle of this revelation. He goes on, any variations in the splendor with each of these manifestations of the light of God has shed upon the world should be ascribed not to any inherent superiority involved in the essential character in any one of them, but rather to the progressive capacity, the ever-increasing spiritual receptiveness which mankind in its progress towards maturity has invariably manifested. That bears some, that, that, that I think that needs a little explanation too. Basically, or maybe I should let you explain that. No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shoghi Effendi seems to be saying, and this uh, again, with no authority here, every manifestation of God, every prophet of God came along and did their job. They're, they revealed the word of God in a way that was right with for the time. time. That's right. But each manifestation, each revelation had a purpose in this, you know, in the panorama of time. Each one preparing mankind for the next and the next and the next. But this doesn't mean that this dispensation, you know, let me read it, is, is, is superior, is inherently superior. It's not. It says any variations in the splendor with which of these uh, with, with which each of these manifestations of the light of God is shed upon the world 
should be ascribed not to any inherent superiority. In other words, even this revelation is not superior to previous revelations. So why does this seem more fit for today? He's, he tells us, he says, involved in the essential character in any one of them. Let, let me jump forward. I'll just say this because of, but rather to the progressive capacity as mankind has grown throughout the ages, evolved throughout the ages, the progressive capacity, the ever increasing, increasing spiritual receptiveness, which mankind in its progress towards maturity has invariably manifested. And I've heard you talk about that several times, Daryl, in ways that are so much clearer than I could ever say. <laughs> but yeah, uh, basically we are evolving spiritually. And consequently, this revelation is presented in a way that we can digest and apply right. given our level of spiritual development as a race. I'm talking about the race of humanity. Now, we have one way, because I, I told you this was, was going to be cutting it close here. here. Here's a final passage from a Shogi Effendi. He says, and this is also from World Order of Baha'u'llah, who can doubt that such a consummation, the coming of age of the human race, who can doubt that such a consummation must signalize in its turn the inauguration of a world civilization such as no mortal eye hath ever beheld or human mind conceived. Who can doubt, who can doubt that this is bringing about a development unlike any other? Now, those are my words. Who is it that can imagine the lofty standard which such a civilization as it unfolds itself, is destined to attain. We are destined for great things. Who can doubt? I mean, who is it that can imagine the lofty standard which such a civilization, as it unfolds itself, as, as it unfolds itself, is destined to attain? Who can measure the heights to which human intelligence, liberated from its shackles, will soar? I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Who can measure the heights to which human intelligence liberated from its shackles will soar? Who can visualize the realms which the human spirit, vitalized by the outpouring light of Baha'u'llah, shining in the plenitude of its glory, will discover? Amazing things are still to come. We are destined as, you know, God's supreme creation. Amazing things are coming because of this revelation. And we're only at the beginning of it. That's right. We're only at the beginning of it, and that needs to be pointed out. We're only at the beginning of it. But you can see glimmers of what are being talked about. Well, this also says that Baha'u'llah, in his wisdom, has placed a lot of faith in the potential of mankind Yeah. to bring about this new world order. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. You know, it's kind of funny that you would say that because he's placed a lot of faith in our potential. That's right. Next week. <laughs> did you see the title of next week's chapter? No, I didn't. The consequences of rejecting Baha'u'llah's <laughs> teachings. So that'll be very interesting. At this time, yeah, we run a little over what we normally do. Usually at about 1045, we stop and we um, pause for some prayers. If anyone would like to offer a prayer. Or we were a little late getting started. Well, that's true. I forgot about that. So we're right on time. <laughs> but as usual, we want to start with our Canby's moment. Canby's, do you have something to share with us today? Sure, if I may. Please.
دوستان را به گلستان سر و راستی را نما و به زینت خلو و زیور حقیقت و حسن طبیعت و پاکی تینت بیا را را از هر خیالی فارغ نما و روی هایشان را چون کوکب جهان راستی با
like to say a healing prayer for Giti's dear mom and Mrs. Melanian. Thy name is my healing, O oh my God, and remembrance of thee is my remedy. Nearness to thee is my hope, and love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing and my succor in both this world and the world to come. Thou verily art the all-bountiful, the all-knowing, the all-wise. Ya ilahi, ya ilahi, ismu kashafai, wa zikru kajawai, wa qurubu karajai, wa hubu kamunisi, wa rahmatu katabibi, wa muini, fi dunya wa l'akhirat, inna kanta al-mu'tiyu al-alimu al-hakim. Thank you, Gigi. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Well then. Okay. Well, friends, as always, we always like to point out that this is a community uh, effort, a joint community effort. And uh, we are coming to you through the good graces of the uh, Clearwater Baha'is using their, uh, they're allowing us to stream through their clearwaterbaha'is.org website. And if you are someone who's interested in knowing more about the Baha'i faith, there are some uh, authoritative websites that uh, we always like to remind people uh, are out there that you can access. And what are those websites again? And they are <laughs> www.baha'i.us, www.baha'iteachings.org, and www.baha'i.org. And if you happen to be in the Tampa Bay area and would like to know more about the faith, you can always go to the Clearwater uh, website. And that is at www.clearwaterbahais.org. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at the Facebook feed here. <laughs> I see Lisa Maxwell joined us today. And my brother Frederick too. Hey, how are you? And I saw Nini's name floating up. Uh, so hi, Nini. I hope you're doing well, babe. We just talked this morning, so I know. Is it okay in a spiritual gathering to refer to your wife as babe? I don't know. <laughs> hey, babe. <I> guess. <laughs> But as we always like to say, as you pass through the world this week, I'm only going to ask you to do one thing. And that is very simple and easy. And that is share the love. Will people of justice be as brilliant as the light and as splendid as the fire that blazed in the burning bush? The brightness of the fire of your love will no doubt fuse and unify the contending peoples and kindreds of the earth. Whilst the fierceness of the flame of enmity and hatred cannot but result in strife and ruin, we beseech God that he may shield his creatures from the evil designs of his enemies. He verily hath power over all things. Let your vision be 
show me yourselves. For the evil one is lying in wait, ready to entrap you. Gird yourselves against his wicked devices and led by the light of the name of the all-seeing God. Make your escape from the darkness that surrounded you. Let your vision be world-embracing rather than confined to your own self. These are the words of Baha'u'llah. yourself a good week out there and thanks for joining us and uh even if you didn't join us and when we when we did the program in real time thank you and thanks for thank you everyone and uh in the zoom stream too facebook land zoom stream you all have yourself a good week thank you and and i want to see what joan put here in the, in the chat room i mean in the in the chat in the zoom so um i'm just gonna lean in here and see because joan always puts such nice things i think that was her name Jesus Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony, are we having devotions <laughs> next week due to a Yamaha picnic? That's a good question that I had not considered. I'm going to say I don't know, but probably not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> That's a very good question. Maybe we'll have devotions from the picnic. Well, that would be good. <laughs> so we'll have to see. I don't know. Um, have a good week while we think about it. <laughs> while we think about it. And uh, everyone out there, I see Rose's name here too, Rosa. And Gila is in this one. Uh, thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Miss you. Wish you Thank you there. both. <laughs> Thanks, Kambi. Thank you, Kambi. All of you take care. Have a good one. Let's see. I'm going to stop the Zoom first and foremost. And uh, then we'll stop Facebook. <laughs>